Today, I wanna to talk about the one thing that is stopping you from becoming either a successful Python developer or a successful Python freelancer. So let's talk about what that one thing is that is holding you back. Hey you, what is up? How's it going? This is Kazi, or also known as Papa Python from cleverprogrammer.com. We all know that we have a lot of, you know, deep down you kind of feel this thing where you feel like, man, I have a lot of potential. It's just there's no reason for that potential to come out a lot of the times. Uh, and in my life, I personally, and on purpose, let things get so bad and so terrible that eventually I start feeling the pain of it. Because of that pain and that lingering feeling, it makes me step up to who I can actually become. It makes me step up and be a different person because if I kept being this person, it'd be too painful and I would either become homeless or broke or something really terrible. So those are some of the hacks I have personally used. But again, those are do not try this at home type of hacks. I'm very risk driven and most people are not, you know, most people are risk averse. So I would not recommend that for you, but I would still kind of recommend it because most people just don't get punched in the face a lot. And I don't mean you physically getting punched. I just mean you don't let life hit you. If you don't actually feel that pain deep down in your body, you're not going to change. For example, let's say that my hand was on this whiteboard. I know I should probably move my hand and then, you know, pick up a marker and write, or I should move my hand and then I should go do something else, right? Why should I just keep my hand here the whole time? But I can take my time with it, right? If I have it here, I can just be talking with you and resting my hand on the whiteboard and just chilling, right? I can do that. But now instead of a whiteboard, imagine like there's no trigger, right? There's no need for me to change fast. There's no sense of urgency that requires me to change that behavior fast and get my hand off the whiteboard. Now imagine instead of this being a whiteboard and being cold, imagine if it was a fire and imagine what happens when my hand feels the fire. I'm going to yank it off the whiteboard, right? Or I would yank it off the stove. In the short term, it looks like the fire was a really, really, really terrible thing. Except when you really think about it, it was actually one of the most beautiful things. It allowed you, allowed you to change fast. But again, I'm not talking about the actual physical fire. I'm talking about bad things happening to you, like actually bad things happening to you in real life, right? Not just something that happened you perceive as bad, like somebody just looked at you the wrong way and stuff, right? But Instead, you actually try to apply for a job and you try to do all these things and it just failed. Nobody accepted you. You didn't get hired anywhere and you're stuck exactly where you're at. All right. When enough of those bad things happen to you and you let them happen to you, it's essentially like eventually you'll feel like there's a fire burning. It's heating up, heating up. And once the fire of things being so bad in your life starts to burn so hot that it starts physically hurting you. Is your change going to be like this slow, gradual change or is it going to be this rapid change? It's going to be the latter one, right? It's going to be the rapid change that takes place. And this is something you can do in your life. You can design your life in a way where you end up making a change rapidly, but you have to put literally evolutionary and existential pressure on yourself because otherwise most of the times you're just going to do the thing that makes you feel good in the moment. So for example, you are simply going to just watch more shows instead of coding more. You're going to go on Facebook for a little bit longer and look at the notifications and go, Oh, what's going on? You're just going to keep getting those short, short term dopamine hits because that's going to be a lot more exciting for you in this release of endorphins than going through like something like learning how to code or making applications. So for example, for if you know my story in the past, when I started becoming really good at coding and when I started building this channel called Clever Programmer, I forced myself, I canceled all my clients. I brought my income from six figures to roughly uh, $12,000 a year or to $0 a year, something very low, canceled all my clients. Then I got an office space where the expenses were actually higher and I did that. So then I actually had more expenses, almost no income coming in guaranteed. I was going to run out of my money and guaranteed I was going to have no money like 
by the time it hit next month because I've never been good at saving. So any money I've ever made, I just figured a way out to use it. When I did that, I put so much pressure on myself that eventually I just had to do the right things, right? I just had to go all in. So I was enjoying it, but then that made me go all the way. And now again, I don't recommend this for you. Most people, this will give them a freaking heart attack. It makes me go, mm, that's pretty cool. Like life is actually challenging. Let's do it. For me, life is all about you know, just curiosity and doing things that feed that curiosity inside of you and uh, things that you don't think you can do. So it's, it's essentially a game in a way where if things are too easy, it's kind of boring. And I think that for a lot of us, it's like that, except you got to understand your level of tolerance. My level of tolerance is really, really high. All right. And sometimes this is, this happens because of your childhood or how you're grown or just the things that happened to you. So my tolerance is really high. Most people aren't that, aren't at that level. I'm not saying it's a good level. I think it's actually a very bad thing that I have, but push yourself to the point where you actually feel some kind of stress, some kind of evolutionary pressure on you. So then when your motivation gives out and all those things give out, there's something lingering in the back that makes you do it. Some level of stress is healthy. That's why when you go to the gym, what are you doing to your muscles? You're actually putting stress on your muscles, right? So you have good stressors. So you want to put like the good stressors, uh, not the bad stressors. All right. So you want to, you want to pressure yourself. You want to put yourself in those situations. Like another example of a good stressor I'll give you is I do these group coaching calls every week with my students from profitable shortcut. It's one hour commitment every week but it holds me to that time accountable and I go and do it. It's a very tiny level of a stressor, but it's a good stressor. It makes me show up and then I just build it up. So then I'll have like scheduled team meetings, scheduled team calls. Um, I will have scheduled time for when I code, I'll have scheduled time. So it's like I force myself into these little stressors and it pushes myself to every day, then get better and better and better. So, Good stressor is very important. You need to put yourself in situations that really, you know, that whole thing is too general where they just say, make yourself, put yourself in a position where you're uncomfortable. That is too general. But what I like to say is put yourself in a situation where you have no choice but to succeed, or at least it feels like it. And either you're going to swim or you are just going to drown. And you need to figure out a way to trick your brain into feeling that. For me, it's really hard to trick my brain. So I actually have to put myself in really horrible positions to actually, you know, have that level of compassion and fire. And then just, then I can commit, then I can go all in. But until that happens, my, my body doesn't really feel the need to actually go kill it at that level. So for a lot of you, right, you want to become great developers and let's say Python developers or whatever it may be, Java developers, it doesn't really matter. But let's say you want to become a great developer. All right. So whether you're trying to become a Python developer or whatever it may be, what you need to understand is what's stopping you is not some level of skill. It's not some level of you need 20 years of experience to get there. A lot of the times what's stopping you is putting yourself in situations that are like good stressors. You know, you'll apply to like one job maybe, and then you get disappointed when that doesn't work out. And now you don't apply to a second job. You don't put yourself in that evolutionary pressure because you already have another job and things are going well and you're making enough. So you're getting by. That's the most dangerous freaking thing when you have, when you're just doing good enough, when, Let's say some of you might be making 20, 30, $40,000 a year doing some other job. Um, and now you want to become a Python developer. You want to, you know, get your income higher, like 60,000, 70,000, $80,000, whatever your goal is. If you're just making just enough, you're never going to get to the level where you have that burning desire to make more or do more or be better because you're not feeling that pain. Okay. So if you're making like 33 K, you're going to be like, this is cool. You know, I can, I can stay here. 
Like, let's say if uh, there's a level, you're here right now, right? You don't have a reason to get to this newer level here, okay? You don't have a reason to get to that newer level. You don't see why should I get there. But oftentimes when you go below and you force yourself in situations which make it really tough for you, and let's say instead of being at this level where you were before, you force yourself to be at a super low level, then what happens is you have so much fire building up that then you want to get to that next level. You want to get all the way to the top. All right, sorry, my drawings are not the best. But you essentially wanna get to the top. And the reason why I say being in a position like this is bad is, do you know how you boil a frog? Do you know how you actually kill a frog in boiling water? So let's say you have boiling water, right? In this like big thing and you put a frog in it. That's a frog, apparently. If the water is already boiling, it's gonna jump out. It's gonna run out right away, it's gonna detect that. But to kill this frog, what you do is you gradually increase the temperature. So in the start, it's not boiling at all, then you increase it a little bit, then you increase the temperature more, then you increase it more, then you increase it more, and eventually the water you know, is boiling and then that ends up killing the freaking frog, all right? So what kills us oftentimes in life is being in a situation where we gradually, in a lukewarm way, get to a level of mediocrity. And then from mediocrity, we gradually keep going lower and lower and we get to a point where it's so bad that eventually it ends up killing us. I don't mean physically. Most of the times it kills you from the inside. It kills your passion, it kills your hopes, it kills your dreams, it kills your desires, and it fills you with a life of regret and you just wish you could have done more when you had the chance. But put yourself in boiling hot water and you'll jump right out right? The frog jumps right out when you put it in the hot boiling water. And that's essentially what I do to myself. I don't like to go in and just get cozied into like a certain situation. And then I'm like, yes, I'm just going to hold on to my laurels here and I'm just going to rest and relax. Anytime I start feeling that, I'm like, fuck this. I'll put myself in boiling water. That way my body actually detects it. And that makes me jump out and change things fast. Um, like I was mentioning, this is, this is day five of my video challenge. I'm doing a video a day. And the reason what got me to do that was because in the last few months, I was messing up horribly. You know, I was being lazy. I wasn't making videos. I wasn't showing up for Clever Programmer. I wasn't responding to comments. I was just being a really bad version of myself, at least when it came to work and business. I was being really good with family and experiences and I had really unbelievable rich experiences with friends. I developed way deeper bonds. So all that was great, but my business and everything else was slacking really hard. My coding was slacking. So I was being a really bad version of myself. But what I ended up doing was I started making the situation kind of worse for myself. And then I'm like, it's gonna make me get out of it. And eventually um, it got so bad and I was really scared that I'm just gonna keep making it worse, but I'm not gonna actually pull myself out of it. So at some point, I had to just stop and start pulling myself out of it because the pain of being in that bad situation was just getting really, really horrible. So for you, the lesson I don't want you to take from this is to just make your life like really miserable. But what I want you to take away from it is put yourself under a good level of stress that you know you can do. So for example, if I'm at the gym, I know I can squat a certain weight. Right? So if I'm trying to go for my one rep maximum, I know I've done 205 or 200 in the past. So up until I get to 200, I should be okay for my squat. But if I put on, but if I go and I wanna try my one rep maximum, I'm not gonna put on 500 pounds on the squat bar and then try to squat it. So what I mean by that is if you are doing a job and you're doing these things and your tolerance to Ambig uh, ambiguity and your tolerance to the unknown and your tolerance to, you know, risk isn't that high, then do not quit your job. Don't quit your Uber thing or whatever it is that you're doing and go all in because your heart might not be able to take it or it might be too, too bad of a situation. So put yourself in a situation where 
it feels real and it's a good level of stress and then you can you know increase the level of stress that you put on yourself because for me that drives me out of all kinds of slumps and i really hope uh, that it's gonna drive you out of a lot of these bad slumps as well with that said what ends up happening is you once the boiling water is so hot right you jump out really fast and then really quickly you start building a momentum of good habits okay so for example right now every morning i wake up i drink my black coffee i listen to an audiobook right before this video i was listening to my audiobook i make a video and then i go to the gym so right after this video i'm going to be going to the gym it's monday and i'm doing this every day and i change these habits and develop them really really fast because i just had enough of the other situation that i was doing and the pain just got too much okay so now that's what i'm doing and it's building this momentum of strong and amazing habits and when you jump out of that boiling water you too can have a momentum of really strong habits so for example you can build a momentum of strong habits when it comes to you know now you're coding every day or now you're learning machine learning or now you're learning this that or the other thing whatever it may be the case for you but you'll develop those habits really fast and they can help you become a high income earning successful developer whether you're remote and then give you the time money and the freedom you want to have so that was the concept i wanted to explain it's a pretty tricky concept i hope you apply it in your life and you find where you can put a good level of stress on yourself. So if you are wanting to get better at coding, but then you're spending 40 hours or 20 hours or whatever it may be doing Uber or something that's not in line with your goal, fuck that. Put pressure on yourself, right? Quit that coding thing, or quit that Uber thing that you're doing. Have the burden of financial stress. Have the burden of like, I don't know if I'm gonna have food tomorrow. Have the burden of how is my, if you have a family, then probably, then don't do it, right? Then it's like gambling. Then you're getting into bad situation. Again, find the balance for yourself, right? I was single when I did this, so I could do it. But find the balance where you can really push it. But I would push it. I would either minimize my hours or cut the Uber off because it's not gonna fulfill you in your long-term goals. So what are you doing spending time there? You're Not every dollar is equal. So the $5 you're making in Uber, that's the equivalent of you know nothing when it comes to in your f future life but if you start making five dollars an hour with coding for example that's a lot because you're going to be doing coding for a much longer time so understand that not every dollar is equal i'm going to make a video on that as well leave a little note to myself so please understand this i would cut the uber and now i have financial stress i'm like i don't know what i'm going to be doing then I'm enjoying coding, but because there's real stress there, I will not just apply to one job and quit. I have no choice. I'll apply to another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, another, 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 another. And eventually I'll get it. Eventually I'll get something. I'll find work because I forced myself in a situation where either I'm going to sink or swim. Too many of you put yourself in these situations where it doesn't really matter. You have a fine enough job, you have a fine enough life. You don't have a reason to commit. You don't have a reason to actually go all in. With that said, that's what I wanted to cover in this video. I have a new program coming up. It's gonna be called Earn 1K with Python. And a lot of these things that we talked about that subconsciously hold you back from becoming a six-figure developer, having that time, money, freedom, you want to have i in this program we burst through a lot of these things and i get into details of what you need to do actually every week so we have a action step every week for you to do one very simple one because i realized you only need to do very few things but do them consistently and that's what's going to change your life like i went through my whole experience of becoming a developer and if i could distill it i could distill it only into these eight steps essentially and in that earn 1k program i have made those eight steps and then i give you those eight steps to do and change your life and be on your path to becoming a six-figure developer and we burst through the mental blocks and especially the idea of strong momentum of strong habits and then we get really into how to break through the procrastination as well and maximizing your productivity, then specific things that you need to do with coding, all right, to boost yourself and get to that six-figure income. 
If you want to find out about that course and you're interested, then probably in the description down below, just go to cleverprogrammer.com or just type in cleverprogrammer.com and put in your email somewhere. Once I have your email, then I have a way to reach out to you. And that way I will let you know, I'm not only going to provide you with an amazing masterclass when you put in your email, but I will also send you when that course comes out, I'll, you'll be the first one to know. Okay. Thank you so much. Just wanted to share that. And I love your face. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.